Good evening. My name is Melissa Simpson, and welcome to Evening Prayer, Rite 2, with All Saints Episcopal Church. You can follow along in your Book of Common Prayer, starting on page 116. Today is also the feast day of Mary and Martha of Bethany. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all of our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let's say together on the top of 118, O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Today's psalm reading is Psalm 36 which is found on page 632 of your Book of Common Prayer. We are going to be reading verse 1 through 5. We'll read them responsibly. There is a voice of rebellion deep in the heart of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes. He flatters himself in his own eyes that his hateful sin will not be found out. The words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful. He has left off acting wisely and doing good. He thinks up wickedness upon his bed and has set himself in no good way. He does not abhor that which is evil. Your love, O God, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Mary and Martha of Bethany are described in the Gospels, according to Luke and John, as close and well-loved friends of Jesus. Luke records the well-known story of their hospitality, which has made Martha a symbol of the active life and Mary of the contemplative. John's Gospel sheds additional light on the characters of Mary and Martha. 
When their brother Lazarus is dying, Jesus delays his visit to the family and arrives after Lazarus' death. Martha comes to meet him, still trusting in his power to heal and restore. The exchange between them invokes Martha's deep faith and acknowledgement of Jesus as the Messiah, which is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 21 through 27. John also records the supper at Bethany at which Mary anointed Jesus' feet with fragrant ointment and wiped them with her hair. This tender gesture of love evoked criticism from the disciples. Jesus interpreted the gift as a preparation for his death and burial. The devotion and friendship of Mary and Martha have been an example of fidelity and service to the Lord. Their hospitality and kindness and Jesus' enjoyment of their company show us the beauty of human friendship and love at its best. Many Christian writers have interpreted Martha and Mary as symbolizing the active and contemplative lives. In most cases, however, they stressed out, they stressed that this division of action and contemplation was not a simple dichotomy. Although most ancient and medieval theologians tend to prioritize the contemplative life, all of them stress the necessity for the different vocations of both sisters in the church. In his sermon 104, Augustine of Hippo writes that Martha has to set sail in order that Mary can remain quietly in port. Although in some ways, he thinks that the adoring worship of Christ is indeed superior. It does no good to adore Christ without serving and feeding him, as Martha did, and, all, and as all Christians can do by serving those in need. The Cistercian theologian, Allred of Rivolo, wrote that just as Mary and Martha dwelt as sisters within one house, so also the active and contemplative life should ideally dwell within the same soul. Although most pre-modern writers tend to view Mary as superior to Martha, the medieval mystic Meister Eckhart in his Sermon 86 argued that Martha was the more spiritually advanced of the two sisters, suggesting that she is mature enough that she is no longer enamored by religious feelings or experiences, but able to move on from them to the practical work of service. In this case, Jesus' words that Mary, quote, has chosen the better part are meant to reassure Martha that her sister is on the right track and that when she is ready, she too will eventually move on from only seeking spiritual consol consolation to serving where she is needed. continue on page 119 with the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has listed, lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now let's say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator in heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born to the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's read Suffrages A, found on 121. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you we can live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, enjoyed rest and refreshment in the home of Mary and Martha of Bethany. Give us the will to love you, open our hearts to hear you, and strengthen our hands to serve you and others for his sake, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead, we thank you for the blessings of the day that is past and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours through him who died and rose again for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us. For evening is at hand, and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope, that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. Give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give a rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Together, let's read the general thanksgiving found on 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. To us and to all whom you have made, we bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with your, our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. 
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us for evening prayer.